In a week, I will celebrate my 81st birthday. I've had a good life that many would envy, despite living through some troubled times. But I have four grandkids, and I worry about the life they will have, and their grandkids. There is no doubt that things are a lot better than when I was a kid. There are no bombs dropping. I'm being whisked away to the air raid shelter for a start. There's plenty of food. When I was a kid, everyone I knew grew their own food. That was just the way it was. There's widespread concern about the way political systems work. Even here in Australia, even in so-called democracies, we feel the impact of the recent phenomena of quasi-sovereign global corporations. We live in an age of unbridled innovation, with the capacity to produce goods and products on an unimaginable scale. Yet the benefits go to the people who control a handful of companies with such great financial resources they seem above the laws of an individual country. So we have a mix of massive wealth for the few, while much of the world's population is in poverty. I find it difficult to accept that in my country, one of the wealthiest in the world, there are people sleeping under railway bridges and scouring dumpsters for waste food. But I'm not a political activist. I don't go to protest meetings or carry placards. But I do worry about the sort of society my grandkids will grow up in. That's personal. But my interest in life is food. And my biggest concern is the manipulation of the truth that occurs on the internet. Not technically lying, but cleverly leading people to the wrong conclusions. Take the story of James McCullum, who was exploring in the Himalaya mountains, where he discovers a valley that was completely unknown to modern civilization. The people had zero contact with the outside world, had no concept of modern conveniences. But they all lived to 120, but were slim, beautiful and healthy, until it was time to die, when they just turned into a pile of dust which was spread onto the fields. James found out that the secret was a magic plant, so he smuggled out a few seeds in his shoes and found they were incredibly easy to grow. He was bombarded by vulture capitalists, who were more than willing to provide him with all the capital he needed to set up a factory to make pills. He was simply overwhelmed with orders when he offered a month's supply of pills for $49.95, which he could make for seven bucks. Steven Spielberg tried to get the filming rights to the story, but wisely James wanted to keep his operation secret. Now all that is bullshit, of course. I just made it up. But it is typical of the misinformation we are exposed to daily on the internet. But this type of information means we now eat a diet which has led to a reduction in health span across the globe. But I am just a dull, boring engineer. I try and think of new and better ways of doing things. It is called innovation. And in my view, the world will be a better place for my grandkids if innovation is for the benefit of the community and not just the lucky few. So I saw my role as developing a growing system to grow real food, the food that leads to health. And in that, I've been technically successful, but there is a snag. It is simply more labor intensive than chemical industrial farming. But that has not stopped many home growers who are more interested in eating real food than the amount of time they spend in, the, in their gardens. But I go to the local growers and they say that people are just interested in price and don't really care about the health consequences. So there is no market. So I talk to my friends, write articles and now make videos making the point. If they want an increased health span, they need to eat real food with all the beneficial nutrients and biology. And they say, that sounds great. Where do I buy this real food? But I can't tell them where to go. So I'm stuck in this chicken and egg trap. If I was 30 or so, I could think about setting up my own farm. But at 81, it is too late. Even though I am fit and healthy, I can do the maths on my expected lifespan. And there is not enough time. If I'm going to have an impact on the sort of worlds my grandkids live in, I need to get a few allies. So if you have a bit of land and think about the future of your grandkids by growing real food, please have a look at my videos and articles. There's a full list at gbiota.com in the watch video list and if you think you can help drop me an email from my web this is not a call for charity 
you can expect to get paid. What I ask is your commitment to drive the process of making the world a better place.